This is the Pinarello Dogma F of Team Ineos's Teo Gegenhart. He's a Giro winner, but will he be winning the Tour? Pinarello is one of those bike brands that only offers one road race bike to its teams, and Ineos have the lovely Dogma F. Now, this is a bike that I've ridden in the Pyrenees in uh, the south of France, and uh, I have to say that it handles beautifully going down the hills. I could probably never do it justice actually going up though. Ineos are a team that has famously played around with its wheel sets, but it's now a fully Shimano sponsored team. So there's none of that funny business going on. We've got full Shimano Dura Ace DI2 disc, um, and so let's start with the gears. What we've got is a very interesting setup for Teo. We've got the massive pro standard chain rings of a 54, 42 tooth uh, chain ring setup up the front. And while we've seen a lot of riders going with, you know, some decent gears on the back, Teo has got a massive 34 tooth cassette on the back. That's gonna get him up pretty much anything. Moving towards the front of the bike, one of Teo's teammates, Filippo Garner, had a few chainring issues in Paris-Roubaix. Um, and, well, I'm not sure if it's an answer to that, but the team is running a K-Edge chain catcher up here uh, just to protect from any dropped chains. The Jura Ace theme continues with the C50 wheel set, and unlike Jumbo, who are in the car park beside us, Ineos are going for the tubeless setup. Those are muck-off tubeless valves. These are the Continental Grand Prix 5000S TR tires, and we would expect that they are running some sort of insert inside there just to have that bit of uh, flat protection, but also to allow the riders to continue safely in a straight-ish line if they do have a sudden puncture. Quite interestingly, and I'd imagine that Ineos have looked at the rolling resistance data here, these are 28 millimeter tires and a quick look inside the frame suggests they could even go to a 30 millimeter tire if they wanted. We'll stay down at the wheel set now because fitted to those wheels is a 140 millimeter rear rotor and a 160 millimeter front rotor. Teo obviously likes a little bit more braking power up front or it might just be helping with heat dissipation on the long mountain passes. At the rear of the bike, there's a nice touch here, a nice little pink nod to Teo's Giro win. He's got his name sticker there. Ineos have a lovely habit of putting a little sticker just to mark the rider's saddle height so that they can tell exactly where the saddle needs to be. Mounted at the top of this seat post is the Physique Antares open saddle. This is a carbon rail design. Um, it's got a central cutout, bit of pressure relief. Obviously, it's the one that Teo chooses. And then as we move to the front of the bike, we've got the most integrated uh, cockpit. This hides all of the cables really neatly in the front end. None of them are in the wind, but also aesthetically, it is a lovely, lovely design. Teo isn't the smallest guy and still he is running quite a narrow bar. I'd say they're about a 40 centimeter width and the stem, well, it's not stupid long, maybe a 110 or a 120, uh, that's, pretty bang average for a pro. Up at the front of the bike, you will also find one of the neatest tape jobs in uh, all of pro cycling. How they get the tape to finish so nicely, I'm not sure, but I believe that a little dab of super glue is involved. Finishing the bike at the front end is obviously the Dura Ace 12 speed shifters. These have the extended body. They're also a little bit taller. They cant in just a little bit but that's all in the design i really like this shifter shape i've been using it quite a bit um, and obviously the pros seem to be quite happy with it too what do you think of this bike would you uh have one of these for free i'm pretty sure you might remember to look out for the rest of our tour de france content and before you go like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one